We're going to talk about enhancing your security with Cisco and Meraki products. I'm so excited that you are here. I want to show you how you can engage today. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer. You are on mute. You already know that, right? So you're going to get the recording and the slides within 48 hours. So look for that in your email box. If you would like the closed caption, just click on that CC link at the bottom of your screen and you'll be able to follow along with the closed captions. And if you hear something that you think is cool today, why don't you go ahead and share it and hashtag TechSoup on it, whether you're using Twitter or Instagram. I'm going to get ready to turn this over because I'm not the speaker. I'm excited for everything you're going to learn today. I'm going to turn this over to Shasta Keating and she's going to take it away. Thank you so much, Aretha, for organizing the webinar. Welcome, everybody. It's wonderful to host this for you. Um, I am the Director of Hardware and Other Strategic Partnerships at TechSoup, and it's just a delight to be here with Cisco to talk about security, which is top of mind for so many of us. Uh, Cisco Networking Equipment and Technologies powers over 80% of the world's internet traffic. Let that sink in. Its market cap is 200 billion. Its 2022 revenues exceeded 50 billion in US dollars. Cisco's commitment to innovation is evident in these numbers, but Cisco's passion for social impact and our sector is just as inspiring. They have positively impacted 848 million through their social impact grants and programs and that's just between FY16 and 22. They've contributed 494 million in cash and in-kind contributions to community programs by Cisco and Cisco Foundation, including 377 million in in-kind contributions uh, for Cisco Networking Academy. They've done stuff for Ukraine. They do stuff for all the for 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 the nonprofit sector all the time and in many many impactful and meaningful ways. It's an honor for me to work with Cisco because TechSoup has enjoyed a 20 year relationship with Cisco. Um, and it's just, it's, it's fun. They're willing to help. And um, they're really, really talented. Cisco employees are really, really incredible um, engineers and people that understand people and people that understand our sector. It is my joy to welcome Patrick Verre, who started as a lab engineer at Cisco Belgium. He was a kind of a pioneer, one of the first field support engineers in the EMEA region. He managed and deliver, delivered so many incredible things um, to Cisco TAC and started the Cisco donations program outside the US. So kind of a champion for global Cisco social impact. Now managing the worldwide charitable product donations program of Cisco. We just really welcome you, Patrick. Thank you so much for joining us. Eric, another good friend, Eric Knudsen, is the technology strategy and solutions lead for Cisco crisis response. If people are in need, Eric is the person that shows up. But he's working to enable the team in delivering solutions and services to those most in need. Eric speaks delivers training and designs secure Cisco internet communications platforms to provide capabilities to organizations of all sizes and dispositions. Um, Eric and I both enjoy scuba diving and running in races in his spare time, as well as refining his award-winning chili recipe with a very unique and spicy um, Korean uh, spice. He and his wife, Alyssa, live and enjoy the humidity of Houston with their beloved Chihuahuas, Bugsy and Santo, and Husky, Eli. So we would love to, with that, I'd like to just be, be uh, pass this on to Jamie, um, who is the Senior Program Manager for our Cisco program, and he will walk us through the different offerings that we are able to do for the social sector, for our sector, through Cisco's partnership. Thank you, Shasta, and good morning or afternoon, depending where you are, guys. Uh, before we pass the reins to Eric, um, so that he can open the floor to a somewhat informal discussion with you guys, and to give you all an opportunity to ask any questions you have related to um, how Cisco Amaraki products uh, do provide enhanced security for your infrastructure. 
Uh, we just wanted to give you a quick overview of the two generous offers that Cisco does make available to nonprofits. That is the Cisco and Meraki donation program, as well as the uh, Cisco Meraki discount program. So starting off with the donation program, um, it's been a long-standing goal of Cisco's, a philanthropic goal to support and uplift uh, people and communities from economically disadvantaged backgrounds. Unfortunately, as great as Cisco products are, handing somebody a firepower switch does not do very much to help them in their day-to-day -day lives. So instead, Cisco began working with TechSoup uh, to offer the Cisco Amaraki donation product, uh, donation and products program uh, to provide the, so the hardware and software needed to nonprofits that themselves focus on helping these communities and people. Um, the donation program um, does offer both Cisco and Meraki product lines, and that includes your security cameras, your sensors, licensing, and a plethora of networking equipment, including your access points, uh, gateways, security devices, and so on. Uh, the donation program uh, does incur a 16% TechSoup admin fee. So any products you get through this program, if you are eligible, um, is around an 86% discount from the full list price. So of course, this donation program is intended for nonprofits that have a primary focus on serving economically disadvantaged people and communities. So you do, to be eligible, need to have a primary focus on that mission type. Uh, this, of course, isn't meant to be a program that supports orgs that can already um, access and implement this kind of technology without the help of the program. So you do need to also have an operating budget, an annual operating budget of $20 million or less. Um, and you do also have not needed, you need to have not have purchased any Cisco or Meraki products. That's from Cisco or Meraki directly, the TechSoup discount program, or any other reseller or retail channel within the last six months or intend to within the next six months. So again, this is designed to be a program that serves people that don't normally have access to this kind of technology. Um, and through TechSoup, um, you can request any number of products that your organization needs each fiscal year, as long as the total TechSoup administrative fees does not exceed $8,000. Uh, there are some finer details uh, regarding the eligibility. Um, there is a link at the bottom of this slide here to the TechSoup website where you can see the specific eligibility criteria. And we'll also post that in the chat for you guys to review. Um, so of course the donation program is incredibly generous, but it is designed for a specific type of nonprofit. Cisco and TechSoup of course want to serve as many nonprofits as we can because everybody serves a very important mission. Um, and that's why we also have the Cisco and Meraki discounts for nonprofits program. Um, so through the discounts program, you can get almost any product that you can get through the donation program. Um, it is with a slightly higher uh, TechSoup admin fee, um, but it is eligible to most nonprofits. Uh, there are a handful of uh, organizations that they kind of sit on the fence of being a nonprofit and other um, activities, including uh, educational institutions government agencies or organizations and non 501c3 public libraries. Uh, these are not eligible for the discount program, but almost all of the nonprofit types are. Um, there is a budget cap, though it is higher on this program. Um, you need to have not to not have an annual operating budget of $50 million or more. And again, you should not have purchased any products through the Cisco or Meraki donation program within the last six months or intend to within the next six months. Uh, before the discount program, if you've purchased from a different reseller or Cisco directly, so on and so forth, you can purchase through the um, discount program. You just cannot mix requests from the discount and the donation program at TechSoup. Uh, there is also a yearly allotment on this program. And I should point out that the year runs June to July. Um, and you can request any number of discounted products for a total of up to $110,000 in TechSoup admin fees. So um, please do check out the TechSoup website to see what products we have available in um, the discount and the donation program. And at the end of this presentation, we will put up some email addresses that you can use to get in touch with the TechSoup teams if you have any general inquiries or would like any help placing an order, we would be happy to help. And I will pass you over to my colleague on the TechSoup team, Kristen Blair. Thanks, Jamie. 
Um, international nonprofits are also eligible to purchase Cisco products through our partners throughout the world in 18 different countries. So if you have any contacts throughout the world that you think could benefit from Cisco products, feel free to direct them to their local TechSoup partner. We also have a way that you can order products that are not listed on our website through our special ordering process. You can email us the products that you want and we will be able to work with you to find um, them at the best price and get them ordered for you. Okay, um, with that said, we will pass over to Eric. Um, again, Eric is a strategy and solutions lead at Cisco. He has a wealth of experience of working with nonprofits um, on improving and implementing from scratch their technology, their network infrastructure. Uh, so Eric, over to you. Thank you very much, Jamie. Uh, and uh, and actually, you know, as we go through this discussion, if there is a relevant page on the TechSoup uh, website that you'd like to share, um, that would be great, uh, uh, honestly. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for including me in the webinar. And um, I'm just here to, to assist in a discussion uh, regarding connectivity. Uh, regarding security, regarding some of the newer offers that uh, are uh, through TechSoup and the Meraki portfolio. Uh, these products I've observed over the years uh, have really improved the ability for most organizations of a variety of sizes, but uh, the smaller organizations uh, that don't have dedicated network specialists to really um, take advantage of some of the technology that's available. Uh, nowadays. Uh, so just a little about me. Uh, you saw that I'm the strategy and solutions lead for crisis response, which for Cisco, that means that we engage with local communities, uh, organizations that are um, or have undergone uh, crisis of some sort. In many ways, that's a natural disaster. Sometimes that involves um, economic crisis and uh, refugees, for example. Uh, so our team uh, has the opportunity and um, uh, I guess really uh, the, a, a mission that we're very proud of uh, to, to assist uh, globally in deploying some of the technologies that Cisco manufactures. And so we have a unique experience um, as far as uh, operators and engineers um, of operating this Meraki product line, which we use because it's very easy uh, to operate and administer. Uh, globally and a variety of crises. Uh, so as, uh, as we see on this page here on TechSoup.org, uh, there are a variety of products and devices that you might uh, already as assume is a, is a Cisco type of a connectivity solution. Whether we talk about the eight port switches and the 24 port switches or the Wi-Fi six access points there, uh, of course, licenses. It wouldn't be a Cisco meeting without a talk about licenses, goodness. Um, uh, and uh, the variety of accessories uh, that are there to support those devices. One of the, the new ones uh, that I really uh, am getting a lot of value out of uh, because we do have disaster response vehicles are the line of sensors that, that Meraki has come out with. And they're approximately this big. This is what they call an MT14 sensor. MT is kind of the, the general nomenclature for all of the sen sensors. And they have different numeric designations. I don't know, Jamie, if there's a page that you've got that up oh, right there, the MT10, for example, on the upper left, or the MT14 there on the bottom right, uh, the air quality sensor. So this is what I'm holding. And, uh, and I've run a Meraki environment for over 10 years as my own personal lab, as an engineer, even as a salesperson uh, in the past. Um, and I use it actually to, to, to run my home. Um, and, uh, and so I've deployed these, these sensors and it gives me the ability to see what the air quality is in any given location, um, whether it's the particulate, whether it's um, the temperature, whether it's humidity, uh, even a noise sensor is in here, so it will actually alert when it says, hey, it's louder than, you know, 80 decibels or something like that. Uh, you know, hearing damage may result. So this may be uh, a type of device that you wouldn't necessarily associate with uh, normal IT equipment, but you could place, um, especially if you're in an area that has some concerns around, you know, 
air quality. I live in Houston and that's a perpetual concern, right? We have refineries and all kinds of stuff like that down uh, on the coast. Uh, but, uh, you know, in the Pacific Northwest, there may be wildfire concerns, right? And that's actually one of the types of missions that our engineers will go out to assist uh, the forestry services and so on and so forth. And, and so we're able to kind of ensure that the people that we send, uh, if they take a vehicle with them that happens to have one of these little battery powered sensors uh, with them, we can make sure that the air quality is good, right? And they don't have to be concerned for that, or they can at least know like, you know, now is the time to be in an air conditioned um, space internally. Uh, some of the other devices uh, that you might see on the screen, for example, are the MT-11 temperature sensor. So there are, uh, in my space, uh, working with nonprofits, uh, several organizations uh, that are oriented around delivering food, right, and food assistance uh, in the wake of a disaster, or maybe that's their program, right? Um, and so we will use the MT-11 in places that should be refrigerated, right, to tell and to alert whenever there is uh, some sort of a temperature deviation. Uh, the leak detection sensor down on that second row, the MT-12, for example, right? With the cable that we drop down from this device, we can tell if there's water ingressing in an environment that should be dry. And so I've seen these types of devices be used for a variety of things that, that you wouldn't necessarily think uh, are there for um, IT you know, types of, uh, of people to, to deploy a solution in on. Um, so I love these and I've been using them for the past year or two uh, and they just keep getting better. They've got great alerting built into it and they make this type of environmental monitoring very accessible uh, for different organizations for that type of a, of a need. My favorite one, well, well my new focus uh, down at the bottom, you can see that little dark circle is a smart button, the MT30. And uh, so for me, uh, I've played around with it and I can send alerts from it. And again, these are all just Bluetooth devices that talk to a Meraki access point. And they don't really need to be that close. It could be 50 feet or so away from the closest either Meraki access point uh, or even a um, smart camera, the newer smart cameras uh, that I think uh, are, are on the TechSoup page as well act as a Bluetooth gateway. So just about anything uh, can act as a little gateway for these types of devices. But that smart button could be put in a place that represents uh, you know, a request of some sort. You know, Hit this button for help, and that button will then send an email request to somebody. And it could be hit this button you know, to open a ticket uh, of, of some, some sort, right? That, that type of a thing. Um, and, uh, and you might, you know, there, there may be a variety of reasons uh, uh, in your organization why you might wanna have that type of user input. And for those that are more technically minded, it can even integrate in with a, a platform that has a web hook, right? And that could be Microsoft Teams, that could be Cisco WebEx, for example, uh, and cause it to send an instant message to a room whenever you hit this button. Um, so I see Ivan, for example, uh, asking if it connects over Wi-Fi. These devices don't, they use Bluetooth low energy. Uh, and in many ways, that's a, an optimal type of network connection because um, it allows that device to be battery powered. So Wi-Fi types of devices tend to consume much more energy uh, than Bluetooth, for example. And when you consider that they're only sending a very small amount of data, right? This air quality sensor is only sending data maybe every 30 seconds or maybe every minute, there's really no reason for the bandwidth that's available over Wi-Fi, but it does use the same Meraki access points, right? So just neat types of devices. Uh, I invite you guys to have a look um, and uh, see if any of these can, uh, can help you. Um, I don't know if there's any other products here that we would like to have a look at. Cameras, for example, I think are something that's been top of mind for a variety of the organizations that we work with. Um, in many ways, you know, we talk about security as far as the network security, cyber security, uh, information security, uh, but uh, there is also a physical security need, right? Um, and especially organizations that may deal with 
uh, clientele uh, or or programs that have um, you know valuable uh, types of uh, commodities, right? Uh, you need to monitor, uh, or you have staff interacting um, with uh, people that are on the street or homeless. You still want may need to have some sort of a record uh, of what's going on, and so we have a variety of cameras here. Uh, that connect um, over a wired connection or over a wireless connection. Those, Ivan, for example, will, can use Wi-Fi. Uh, and you can use them for a variety of applications. You know, your typical indoor um, dome camera use just to get uh, a picture of an area, a room, you know, that could be a cafeteria or even some outdoor oriented cameras uh, that, you know, you can see that the, um, uh, the MV52, for example, is a bullet cam. It could look very far and it may be able to capture vehicles coming in through a gate. Uh, and that's one application that I've used them in. Um, I think the MV32 on the far left in that second row uh, is a fisheye camera. And it's really interesting because it present, prevents, excuse me, presents uh, an overall picture of an entire room. So if you can plop this camera on a ceiling location or even a wall, but a ceiling is optimal. Uh, you'll see everything that happens in an entire room. And then using the web uh, portal for that camera, you'll be able to get an unwarped or de-warped uh, video screen so that you can kind of go through the footage and have a look at what's going on. Going on. Um, so really neat, there's an outdoor version of that in the bottom, it's called the MV93. So an outdoor fisheye camera. Uh, and then a variety of mounting options. You know, if you need to place these on a pole, for example, or on a corner of a building, uh, that way, if you if you can put one of the fisheye cameras on a corner, for example, of a building, well, then great, you can kind of get that 270 degree view uh, of an entire area, both the front and maybe a side of a building face, right? With just a single device, right? And that can you know, reduce the amount of management overhead or, or cost, right, uh, when it comes to these types of solutions. Uh, I think uh, some of the, the, the main strength of the Meraki products and uh, may have actually led uh, Cisco to, uh, to acquiring the company was the strength of their wireless uh, platform, their Wi-Fi devices and their Wi-Fi access points. Uh, so certainly one thing uh, that, that you could use in your environment uh, to help grow, right, a single office type of, a, of an environment to multiple um, offices and maybe even separate floors if they're disconnected, right, because scaling from a single AP to multiple and then allowing for roaming between them or maybe you need multiple access points to cover a larger area than one will provide, you know, you might see some of the mesh solutions that are available um, at some of the electronic stores, uh, you know, these uh, access points a lot allow for that mobile um, uh, uh, use cases, right? That mobility and that seamless coverage over a large area, even if they're on different floors, for example, uh, or, or different locations, they allow you to manage it all through a single portal and single dashboard. So some really great uh, capabilities that are available from an overall IT management perspective. Um, through the through the access points, through the firewalls, when the firewalls operate uh, in a similar way that you might expect them to operate, um, uh, um, similar to other vendors, right? I think the main strength of Meraki typically is is wrapped around how they allow you to manage the infrastructure uh, and how to operate the infrastructure, and it's all done through a web page that you can access wherever you are on the planet, right? So you don't have to be physically located there. You don't have to open up an IP address that corresponds to that device when you're on, you know, that network or in that office, for example. You can use this one single web portal to administer all of this uh, infrastructure that may be spread across the border, uh, for example, uh, of uh, US and Mexico, right? So I'm in Texas, for example, I was able to click down into a Brownsville site, uh, which is right on the border. I, I heard earlier that we have some folks that have dialed in from Eagle Pass, right? And so I'm able to, from a city that's a thousand miles away, essentially from the location, uh, administer the infrastructure, reprogram it as needed, uh, things of that nature. So I don't know if there's any questions that have come in, guys, uh, uh, that need to be addressed. 
or Patrick, maybe you've got uh, some comments to, to add on top of this as I've jabbered on about these products. Nope, you did an excellent job. Keep going. <laughs> Uh, keep going. All right, then. Uh, uh, but we, you haven't spoken about the firewalls yet, I think. That's true. Um, and we can kind of dig into some of those. Uh, and I'm not sure what we've got on the TechSoup uh, portal here. There we are, the security appliances. Okay, right. So from the Meraki products, if you're familiar with Cisco products, and I think we're in a bit of a transition, right? Shasta, last year, we saw that there were a bunch of like enterprise focused Cisco products on in the donation program and so on that maybe weren't oriented, um, you know, they weren't tailored, how about that, uh, to the nonprofits that we typically work with. And so you may have seen firewalls, uh, I think Jamie mentioned firepower earlier, that's a, the name of the, the product line, it sounds very like strong and effective, right? And then we have routers on the other side. And and those are devices that are just meant to connect multiple networks together. Well, from the Meraki product family, the firewall and the router are one device, right? Uh, so these MX100s, the MX68, you see the 68W there, 67W, they're all kind of different flavors of uh, firewall slash router that allow you to connect in the internet safely, protect a network um, behind it, whether that network is, you know, a single small office, whether it's an entire library, right, or whether it's multiple buildings connected together uh, via some sort of a wireless link. We just need to size it correctly. So you can see that there's the MX67 down there on the second row. It has Wi-Fi built into it as well as a cellular connection. So we just need to put a SIM inside of it. And that can be an all-in-one solution for, for a small office with cellular backup. Um, the 67Ws is a larger firewall that allows for more internet connectivity uh, with a built-in Wi-Fi access point as well as the 68W. The MX100, for example, on the upper left corner is more of the rack mount form factor, right? Bigger office, like, hey, we've got a, a, an actual rack there. Uh, and all of these devices perform uh, the same from a feature perspective. Right, um, you'll be able to administer them using the same techniques and methods. You access the same web page, and and it's really just kind of an overall throughput and maybe a port count difference um, uh, between these two or between all of these uh, devices here. Um, but pretty straightforward. And uh, and again, uh, my team uh, works with them and has deployed them globally. Whether we're talking about uh, again, um, uh, an accommodation center in Brownsville, Texas, um, a uh, refugee camp down in Columbia, um, our own emergency response vehicles use some of these like the MX100 size devices. Uh, I've got suitcase versions of these, um, of a disaster response kit that use the 68W and the 67W, for example. So these can accommodate all kinds of different workloads and sizes and they act not only as again a router to connect multiple networks together uh, they also provide vpn services right if you have multiple offices or sites that need to be meshed to dig together because perhaps you have a phone system on top of it perhaps you have some other applications that still haven't been moved to a cloud environment uh, but they also provide what we call intrusion prevention services right so that means that they're pulling a feed down that we constantly update, right? So Cisco invented this thing called Snort uh, and Snort is an open source uh, IPS service and device and we update the signature sets. And so all of these devices can consume this um, cyber intelligence, if you will, to help protect all of the people that are behind it and the, and the devices that are behind the firewalls, which in many cases, especially if you have like a bring your own device type of an environment or you have guest Wi-Fi services, you might, you might not have any ability to influence, you know, the, the uh, antivirus, right? Or the anti-malware capabilities on a laptop or a smartphone or something like that. And so you need something at the network level to help block uh, malware, right? And to help uh, interrupt any types of what they call command and control traffic which go back to cybercrime, you know, organizations. 
So I think that these, these devices are key. It's a foundational aspect of most networks that we deploy. Um, and certainly, hopefully, something that, uh, that all of you can get some value out of as well. Hey, Eric, if you don't mind me jumping in, I think it might be useful to point out, because I'm sure at least one person has noticed how we are um, referencing some Cisco branded products like the Firepowers. And this is, of course, the Cisco and Meraki program. Uh, yet, as we're navigating through these available products, it's almost all Cisco Meraki and not any Cisco uh, classical products. Uh, the only reason for that is that um, because of production constraints through the pandemic and they are still ongoing, there are much longer lead times if you place a request for Cisco equipment. Um, so we have removed most of the products from uh, the TechSoup program and we have got the Cisco Meraki product still because the ship leads are a lot shorter on these. That isn't to say that you can still order Cisco products. Um, if there is something you have, perhaps you want to expand your existing network and it is all Cisco product, or you're looking to set up a new branch somewhere and you are, um, you know, you are going with Cisco rather than Meraki product. Um, please do shoot us an email. Uh, there will be an email address on the last slide here. Um, if you are eligible for the donation program, please shoot us an email at cisco at techsoup.org. Or if you're looking for the discount program, Cisco Meraki at TechSoup. Uh, sorry, no, uh, we don't have Meraki available right now through uh, uh, Cisco available through the discount program. But if you're eligible for the donation program, shoot us an email here. Just let us know what Cisco product you are looking for that's not on the TechSoup website. And uh, we can put together um, um, an estimated ship lead time for you and help you place a request. Just wanted to point that out because it can get a bit confusing when it's the Cisco and the Meraki donation program, but right now you'll only see Meraki product on the website. One quick comment regarding lead times, and I see Adrian has logged a question here. Um, I think that the Meraki lead times have generally recovered, um, uh, you know, in, in, the quarter that we just came out of, it's still, there were still a few products and, the, and and even to this day, there are still a few products that have a 25 day lead time, that type of a thing, um, but uh, largely across the company. And that's just, it's not just with Meraki. Uh, they say that uh, we expect by August, everything to be back to normal. Um, of course, there are gonna be a hot spot, you know, there's gonna be a hot spot here or there um, and a high demand items, right, that kind of a thing. but. Generally speaking, I mean, uh, I won't, I won't put money on it, but everything has kind of generally got back to the normal. As long as you can at least wait a, a couple of weeks, it's better than you know one year, two year plus lead times, right? And Eric, um, on the topic of security, of course, um, is it worth talking briefly about? So you've mentioned how you know, the Meraki ecosystem really reduces um, the amount of effort an org has to put into maintaining and configuring the network because they can do it all remotely through the cloud dashboard. Uh, but of course, they do automatically get firmware updates, right? Uh, for many of the da devices through the cloud dashboard, they will also get um, alerts 24 seven if there are any issues. So it's almost like an automated system through the dashboard. Um, that, of course, is a great security feature of the ecosystem. Is there anything you would like to add on that? Sure, yeah. We could get into cyber policy uh, if you'd like. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big NIST CSF, so uh, NIST uh, cybersecurity framework, uh, Wonk, um, as well as the CIS controls. And, but there are a variety of features in the products that I think lend themselves to an overall cyber program uh, for an organization. Uh, usability is one of them. Uh, I'll be honest, right? It doesn't matter how good a cyber tool is if you don't, if you can't administer it, if you don't understand how to use it, um, and, uh, and it's very difficult to maintain. Um, from my perspective and my own team, uh, as I lead technology strategy here, I've oriented our team to what we call fast IT or lean IT methodologies, right? Which is essentially, let's just get rid of wasteful, unproductive work. Um, and in some cases that can be firmware updates, right? That don't necessarily solve a particular problem. However, I think we all know that uh, there are security vulnerabilities uh, that happen 
nobody knows about them for months or possibly years after they, they actually have occurred. And so having something that continuously updates itself automatically uh, is extremely valuable, right? Uh, and so the Meraki devices, not only do they make it easy to use by everything is on a web dashboard, they update their, their own firmware, uh, they update their own IPS signatures, right? Um, and they do actually, I think Ivan, uh, somebody else uh, asked in the, in, the, in the Q and A, whether we offer umbrella. Well, I will tell you that the Meraki and Umbrella product lines actually use the same unified set of um, threat categories and policies. Um, I'll, I'll run by Cisco Talos at this point. Uh, so if you're on the network, you're right behind one of these Meraki MX security devices, you would have the same sets of protections and uh, and uh, you know content categorization that, that you might typically use with Umbrella. So that's great. Uh, I would say that one of the other big benefits of this product line is that, and perhaps we should um, actually schedule a time for a little demo environment or demo, uh, is that you get visibility, right? The, it, for anyone that's done any cyber program development, you know that uh, inventorying and auditing your environment to even know what's plugged in, right, is a huge part of understanding what the overall uh, you know, problem I've got to deal with is the overall threat surface or attack surface, right? We, we talk about when it comes to cybersecurity conversations and just being able to click into a dashboard and it shows you every device that's connected, every single device, every, every iPad, every iPhone, every Android tablet, you see their name, you see their little IP address and you can click on them and say like, right, that one doesn't need to be on the network. Or you know what, I'm gonna apply a policy to this one device because it looks a little weird. Its behavior is a little odd, right? Maybe I take them from the internal network and I kick them over to the guest network that just plops them on the internet while I do some, some uh, software patching, right? Visibility is a huge component of the Cisco Meraki product set. Whereas if you've ever had to just log in to a terminal session on a piece of networking equipment, you'll know that it's just, it's like a black hole, right? The, the visibility, you have to ask specific questions to understand, you know, what is connected at any given time of the Rocky uh, platform makes it a lot easier to deal with. Eric, uh, perhaps a couple of other things we might want to talk about. Um, the donation program has enterprise licensing for the access points, but we do offer the advanced license as well for the MRs. Perhaps uh, you could talk about that. And then later on, if you have a moment, uh, the MXs, they come in enterprise, but in the donation program, we always choose the advanced security. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, perhaps talk about the differences there and why you want the other one. Not to... Sure. Sure, and I see that uh, Ivan is asking some questions about umbrella versus advanced security. You know, some of these products, you know, aren't aren't designed to fit neatly into an adjacent category, and instead they they actually overlap, right? Sometimes it's a significant amount of overlap, or they they have different use cases. Uh, so the licenses that Patrick was talking about. Uh, the advanced security licenses uh, for the MX uh, product line gives you, you know, firewalling capability, uh, IPS signature updates, um, and uh, and a security service and outcome that's uh, very much like what you would get with uh, Cisco Umbrella, right? Um, now, the thing that Umbrella provides, uh, from my perspective, is uh, is a service that is irrespective of the physical network that you may be connected to, right? Uh, and there are ways, of course, to join the two platforms up so that your Meraki network is integrated in with your umbrella environment and you have uh, uniform policies that go across uh, the two of them. Uh, umbrella, since it is a service that lives on the internet, and for anyone that doesn't know, it is uh, essentially a DNS service. Um, now there are other capabilities that it provides, but it's available. That's something that you can say, uh, protect your own staff while they're at home or while they're at Starbucks and they're not on VPN or anything like that. So that's that's a little bit of a difference there. I would say that the, the Meraki uh, platform makes that same cybersecurity outcome a little easier to manage because it's all built in, it's bundled in. Uh, 
but certainly, you know, if you didn't want French fries with your burger and you wanted something else, you know, hey, the salad is not offered through the Meraki, right? You you, you kind of got to take a little bit of, of some of the, the bundled options there. But the, the reasoning uh, typically that I've heard is that it's because we want to have a unified user experience, right? We want to make it easy to use. And so some of the knobs, right, are taken away, right, from an administrator perspective. Um, so that's one thing that I'd, I'd say uh, about Umbrella. If you have advanced security, I don't believe that you need it. Uh, if your your primary, you know, use case is protecting a network that you have control over. But if you have users that roam and go all kinds of places or it's 90 percent work from home or work from some other location, well, maybe we need a different security control for those users, uh, which, you know, maybe a very small you know, segment of the overall you know, user base, user base that you've got. Um, but again, uh, I would say that the, the Meraki makes it a little easier. Patrick, was that was that everything that you were you were asking, prompting me to? Yeah, the, the other thing is that we do offer in the donation program the enterprise licensing for the MR, but we do have the advanced security. And I right. think that actually includes Umbrella for those who you know really want it. Yes, you're right. Um, and the, the MR um, advanced license that Patrick refers to is that uh, when we deploy the access points, right, those are the MR products. Uh, we can actually integrate Umbrella directly into the MRs themselves. And the way that that works, right, is essentially any client, any laptop uh, that is connected via Wi-Fi, their DNS requests, right, as they, as users are trying to browse to, you know, office.com or box.com uh, or their various applications are trying to go out there, right, uh, that access point will intercept the DNS requests and bounce it off of Umbrella just to make sure it's not malicious, right? And they're not trying to go to, uh, you know, Bitcoin.ru or something like that, where it's 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 something where their their uh, credentials could be compromised or there could be some other malware environment, uh, that that sort of a thing. Now, um, that may be a very easy way for you to kind of deploy Umbrella right into that environment, especially if your uh, users are primarily connecting through Wi-Fi which I feel like more and more organizations are. I can't remember the last time I've actually connected in via ethernet into, you know, at an office. Hi, Eric, we are um, getting down to the wire and we have two questions in the Q&A. And I know you give some very thorough answers. So I wanna make sure they get their answers um, today. Here from Richie, we have, what's the difference between the Cisco and Rocky three-year enterprise cloud license for MX64 security appliances? and the Cisco Meraki three-year advanced security cloud licenses or MS64 security appliances? Well, Patrick, maybe keep me honest here because I'm, I'm uh, running from memory here. Uh, so the enterprise license is primarily for organizations that just need a basic firewall uh, and VPN support, right? So you may actually have, if you think logically in your head about your network topology, Let's just say you have four or five office locations um, and you need to just connect them all together. And perhaps we have some other device, appliance or software that does a lot of your web filtering, right? Well, perhaps just the basic enterprise license is good enough for you because it will allow you to VPN together uh, these locations. It will allow you to, of course, operate the, the firewalls you know, and their dashboard. Uh, and then allow you to VPN them all together. And then perhaps they go to the internet from one single location and you don't really need the IPS capability and that threat feed that comes in uh, from Cisco Talos, right? Um, if you have that, and if you're having, if you have some other device, some other vendor solution, you know, it could be anything, uh, doing that web filtering, cool. I think that that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, but if you do, if you, uh, are using these in a standalone fashion, accessing cloud applications directly from those locations, and you want to have a full intrusion prevention system, then my recommendation is to use the advanced security cloud license. Awesome. And we have another question in the Q&A. Does Cisco provide cloud management of security cameras of an establishment? And if so, what are the costs involved? Okay. Well, I think the costs involved through the donation program are, if I recall correctly, 
80, 85 percent of <laughs> of whatever the 85 percent off a big discount. Um, now, one thing I will mention is that um, you know we we operate uh, these smart cameras from the Meraki cloud, and they have a lot of capability built into the actual cameras themselves. You know, 4K uh, cameras themselves. Sometimes they have up to 512 gigabytes of storage um, to, to hold on to that uh, footage. Most of the, the footage is captured there at the edge. Um, and then we've got smart analytics built into it, object detection, people counting uh, types of things. We intentionally stay away from, from capabilities like facial recognition, at least ourselves. Perhaps you can integrate a third party solution into that. Uh, but, uh, the, the license for the cameras are for these cameras, right? Not third party cameras if you've got, you know, an existing legacy platform, um, but, um, but, uh, but, but for these cameras themselves. Uh, so they provide a, a bunch of capability and control. And I don't know what the exact cost of the, of the camera license is, forgive me, um, but it's probably on your website. Yeah, I should just highlight. So if you are requesting um, a piece of hardware through the donation program, whether that is a security camera or an MX security appliance, there will always be a license bundled with it. So for example, if you were looking at the MV22 indoor security camera, it does include the five-year license. Um, if you're not eligible for the donation program and you're requesting through discount, then in that program, the licenses are uh, they do need to be requested separately. Just in case there's any confusion over the admin fees, if you see you know, a piece of hardware that um, the price just stands out as being very different to the donation, it's because that it won't have the license included. Thank you, Jamie. Here's a question. Now, the cameras are a very uh, popular item right now in donations. And I've, I've asked uh, quite often about how they work. And I think one of the big differences between the, let's say, legacy systems is that the cameras, they store their images by default, you know, on the camera. It does not not go into the cloud. It does not go into a recording service or into a centralized unit. So the license that comes with it is support as well enables the functionality and is the right to use. Well, that's good to know. I don't know if we lost them, but there's a question in the chat room from Rod. He said, will advanced license mitigate at the MR level? Like, will it block a device if configured automatically prior to the device attacking other devices on the same network? Okay. Oh. The Zoom just disconnected, or reconnected me. <laughs> okay. But we had moved over to the next question regarding the advanced license mitigating at the MR level uh, for Rod. Uh, so with the the MR advanced license, uh, from my experience, uh, we're we're talking about adding. Now, there's something that needs to be said on the MR level. There are firewall rules and and traffic shaping rules that allow you to kind of prioritize certain applications or even block some. Uh, so that exists, right, with the existing enterprise license. Now, the advanced license provides the umbrella integration uh, and allows you to to uh, to block traffic based on certain content categories. And that could be, you know, by policy, you know, no gambling, for example, or if it's actually a security threat, right? Um, so, you know, any new DNS request is going to be bounced off of the cloud. We're gonna we're gonna say like this is an unknown you know domain. Maybe this is a um, you know newly registered domain, and we want to block newly registered domains because those are used for malware, um, that kind of a thing. Or this is just a known bad, right? A malicious domain, that sort of a thing. So that's typically for for internet facing traffic. Um, now, from a malware perspective, the majority of malware, like the vast majority of malware, right? requires that the uh, local malware talk to a command and control server that exists somewhere on the planet. So when we block that request, we typically will block the malware itself because they will not be able to download its instruction set and package. So we can say that, right, we can prevent a device from attacking other devices because we're preventing the, the malware from downloading command and control um, you know, instructions or traffic, that kind of a thing. 
but it's not quite the same thing as having a device in line inspecting all of the traffic, right? And preventing that device from uh, attacking others on the same network. Now I will say there is a built-in uh, feature on Meraki access points that allows you to essentially assign a client a private address that only has the ability to, to um, bring that device online, if you will, let's just say a guest network, for example, and, and only talk to the internet, right? And not actually talk to any other devices uh, in the Wi-Fi SSID, right? On that Wi-Fi network. Uh, and I use that all the time for guest networks, right? They call it the Meraki DHCP option, right? So instead of just using the local um, DHCP server, for example, and then assigning it out of a subnet that's there locally, we just say, hey, we're going to kick, essentially put this device on the, on the internet and it can only speak to the internet. In today's world, like if we join a Zoom meeting, well, these devices are not talking to each other directly. We're all talking to each other through the internet platform. So that kind of capability might be what you're looking for here. Just putting them on the internet in a guest network, that type of a thing. And then we're gonna monitor any of their DNS requests out there. Nice, thank you. Jamie, did you want to um, have any final words? Yeah, so um, I did mention this earlier on, but um, if you guys have any questions to do with the programs themselves or the products, please do get in touch with the TechSoup team. Um, if you have a general inquiry and you're not really sure if it's to do with the donation or discount program, email us at either of these um, email addresses here, cisco at techsoup.org or cisco Meraki at techsoup.org, and we will get back to you. Um, and yeah, like I said, you can get um, any Cisco product, almost any Cisco product through the donation program. So if you do not see it on the TechSoup website, send us an email at cisco at techsoup.org and we'll reach back to you um, with an estimated ship lead and an estimated admin fee on that as well. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I just wanted to thank Eric and Patrick for joining and for you, host and Aretha, and for everybody for attending. I hope it's been very useful. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.